So Fazan, my next question will be, what should be the general preparation st uh, strategy of a student should be following by, while studying organic chemistry? Yeah, the general preparation strategy would be to make your foundation of organic very strong. Foundation, uh, when you start organic chemistry, you start with the basics of it. The basic is basically the electronic effect. So the first thing that you start learning in organic chemistry is the electronic effect, which includes inductive effect, hyperconjugation, resonance, aromaticity, doctomerism, stability of intermediates after learning these effects. And then you have to study about migration of certain groups to cause stability. This is one pillar of organic. When you learn this, then you will start to feel very comfortable with the subject. Now, Parallelly, you can also keep learning isomerism because these two doesn't have much of a connection. You, they don't have to move in tandem. Parallel to the electronic effect, you can keep on learning isomerism and especially stereoisomerism because stereoisomerism is one thing that would keep coming up in most of the reaction mechanism. The orientation of molecule is one important aspect in organic. So stereochemistry is something that you have to cringe with right in the beginning. And after doing this, when you uh, uh, have done these two things, then you move on to the basic types of reactions, substitution, elimination, their comparison, their differences. That's it. Once you have done this much, then you have become master of the subject. Now what you have to do is you have to move on from one subject, one chapter to another, and there is no stringent sequence in which you have to go. If you feel like going to hydrocarbon, you pick up the chapter, read it. If you are having an urge to study alcohols, you go and study that. If you want to study ketones and aldehydes, you can straight away go there. If somebody is teaching you carboxylic acid, you can go to the chapter of carboxylic acid. There's no problem. Once you have done the basic. But after doing the basic, you have you can hover from one chapter to other. But the first is you have to bring under your belt the concepts, the basic of organic chemistry, and practice lots and lots of problems based on this. So that is very important. If you do not have a very strong foundation, then it would be actually very difficult to build a high rise building on that. So bring the basic of organic under your belt. That is first thing. And so that, that is how you start. And then you move on to the chapters. You study them one by one. Now, once you have covered the basic, what you should do is you should, because as you would see, there would be lots and lots of reactions that you have to study. And prima facie, it may seem that there are thousands of reactions that are there in the syllabus. But it's actually not true. Most of the th them would be almost the same. So what you have to do is when you study a chapter, suppose when you have completed the basic and then you move on to a chapter called ketones and aldehydes or carbonyl compounds, what you have to do there is you have to make a note of yourself. You have to write down all the reactions that are there in the chapter, each and every one of them that you can see. Once you have made a note of that, you keep doing revision of the chapter, you keep solving more and more problems, you'll get more and more familiar in the chapter. And sooner than later, you would realize there's not too many things in this chapter. It's actually few of the concepts that keep summing up in each and every reaction. So as you spend some time in the chapter, you would see and you would realize that it's actually very few things. And you don't have now the previous list that you have made of the reaction. Now it's time to revise them because most of the thing will seem very trivial to you. For example, initially, when you have studied this chapter, you maybe you have written down the reactions, suppose addition reaction. Now addition reaction could be up from various reagents. So initially, you made a whole list of addition reactions. Addition by water, addition by alcohol, addition by amine, addition by hydrogen cyanide, and addition by elides, addition by organic, organ, organometallic reagents. And then you make a list of separate reactions like allyl condensation, Kanizawa reaction, resentment reduction, bare beleaguer oxidation, whatever reaction is there in the chapter, make a list of that. Now, sooner you would realize that it, all the addition reaction is of the same kind. And there's nothing new that's happening except for the reagent, which is changing in each addition reaction. So the, like the addition of alcohol has occurred in the exact same similar manner, you have the addition of alcohol and amines. And then you have addition of hydrogen, cyanide, silides. Every, every addition is almost the same. 
It's just the reagent is changing. The step to write the mechanism is just the same. So now you don't have to make the list of all the addition reaction. Now you can curtail down your list, and in your list there should be only one reaction for addition reaction and the basic mechanism of that. Similarly, the basic of alcohol condensation. Now you have imbibed the mechanism in yourself. Now in your note there need not be the entire detail of the mechanism. You just have to know alcohol condensation. And the moment you read alcohol condensation, or the moment you say alcohol condensation, the whole mechanism will run at the back of your mind. Via practice, it would come. Now, similarly, can is a reaction. Now, resentment reduction will seem very trivial to you. Now, it's very simple and easy thing. It doesn't have to be in your list now. Similarly, bare vinegar reaction. You don't have to write the entire mechanism of that. So, once you have made a note of one chapter. You have to make a second note of the same chapter in which the notes will be very concise and precise. Now the second note is what is remains with you and that is what goes with you in the examination hall. Now you don't feel burdened with thousands of reactions. Now you understand that there are four or five major things in this chapter and the things that goes in and around with it, you know it innately. That comes to you via practice because there are not too many things. There are very few things and you have practiced them. That, that is something that you have to do if you want to collect everything and go into the examination hall. You have to make a short and precise notes of each chapter. Now, there are four or five major chapters in this and you have to have a notes of those major things. So that's one important aspect in preparation so that you don't, don't bog down, you don't get bogged down with the pressure at the last stage of your preparation. That is very important and this you have to do right from the beginning. It doesn't. It is not something that will come at the end, because it's a learning process. The note making has to be done simultaneously with learning. Most of the people don't make notes initially when they learn things. It seems very natural to them, and then they don't feel like making a note out of it. And at the last stage, when every subject gets mixed up, and then the confusion will take its while. So don't allow that to be happen. Note making is one important aspect of studying, and especially in organic. Because it seems to be very, very too many of reactions in there. You have to actually cons cons make a concise notes and you have to actually boil important things down. And that is what you have to keep with yourself. So that's one important thing. Another important thing while studying uh, organic chemistry is when you study a reaction, you know the mechanism. You know exactly broadly what is happening there. Because in, if, 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 if uh, you are studying from somewhere, I don't know from where you would study, if mechanism is not given to you, if you are just given reaction, reactants, product and reagent, you don't accept that reaction unless you know the mechanism. You hunt for it, go to the right places, you find from where you will get the mechanism and know the mechanism of that reaction. If you know the mechanism of a reaction, the beautiful thing would be you don't have to memorize it. So it stays with you all of this and you will never forget it. So if you avoid mechanism, thinking that it is unnecessary and that's going to take your time, then actually what you are doing is very futile. Whatever you have memorized, that's first, that's not going to come straight away just like that in your exam and especially in an exam like ITJ, they will not you know, pick and choose reactions from your book and give it to you. There would be some kind of catch in there. So in order to cope with that kind of changes that they would do in exam, you have to know the mechanism. And that's the only way of learning organic. You know the mechanism, things become easy for you. If you try to bypass the mechanism, it becomes very difficult. So in learning organic, you know, you keep going through the mechanism of every reaction because in every mechanism there will be few things, the basic 15 to 20 percent of initial syllabus. That's what will be keep coming up. So you don't have to read new things in learning the mechanism and it becomes very easy to so know the mechanism of every reaction that you study and make of notes of every chapter that you study. If you do these two things, I mean things will come to you and you will be able to solve every problems that's there in the paper.